do you know our bike cars vehicles how they move the engines of these vehicles basically depends on the concepts and phenomena of the thermodynamics in this particular lecture series we will discuss more and more about the thermodynamics hello everyone this is dr rahul srivastava assistant professor department of physics bhopal school of social sciences bhopal in this lecture in today's lecture we will discuss about the thermodynamics and the various aspects of the thermodynamics let we starts with the thermodynamic system after this we will have the thermodynamic coordinates the discussion about the various aspects various topics various sub topics of these coordinates one of the important factor of the thermodynamics is the thermal equilibrium we have to understand before going for the various laws of the thermodynamics these are the basic four law the first one is the zeroth first second and the third law of thermodynamics let me starts with the thermodynamical system the thermodynamics is basically a branch of science that uh, deals with the heat and temperature how the system actually absorbing the temperature and converting it into the heat and the further this heat will convert into the mechanical work as we can see the uh, system which is involved in the processing of heat and converting in converting it into useful work is known as the thermodynamic system as image shown that uh, the vapors or the uh, particular temperature vapors has been filled in this chamber and the piston is going up and down the work done is basically the uh, the motion of that particular wheel or the uh, cyclic rotation of the mechanical rotation of that wheel is known as the work done for by the thermodynamic process firstly the french scientist sadi carnot introduced in 1824 that the concepts of thermodynamics about the carnot cycles carnot engine this is basically depends and explain how the engine will work in the future and recently whatever the engine whether it is petrol engine whether it is diesel engine auto engine and some other engines are there they are basically depending on the ideas of carnot has been given in 1824 and the basic pillar or the pioneer of the thermodynamics has been started in 1824 and he said that that the uh, working substance the word he has given the working substance from the thermodynamics actually the uh, the vapors of the particular fuel that is uh, getting burned there and the heat is getting converted from there and this heat further filled in the form of vapors or the working substance the vapors from this working substance has been filled in the piston chamber and the piston is going up and down and this motion of particular up and down provides us the motion of wheel rotation as the particular diagram is also denoting that piston is going up and down and by this we are having 360 degree rotation of a specific wheel or the whatever the mechanical rotating circulating disc we have attached to it after that we are going to discuss about the various thermodynamical coordinates or the various points of the thermodynamics that how we can define the thermodynamics what are the various aspects of the thermodynamics by which we can explain the thermodynamics first one is the temperature as we all know that the hotness or the coldness of the body or an object or an substance that how cold your object or our object is how hot our object is and the temperature we are providing to it this temperature further converted into the heat as we have discussed before and this heat actually is the flow of temperature from one body to another body or we can say that it is transfer of the energy from one object to another object or from one substance to another substance next the pressure as we all know the force per unit on a specific area on a specific area the amount of force we are exerting on it or the force has been exerted by the uh, piston is known as the pressure we are providing there also the volume the uh, area which we have calculated in three dimension that is the length width and the height we are calculating in it and this is known as the volume of that particular uh, thermodynamic chamber after that the internal energy actually the internal energy is basically a combination of two major aspects that is the potential energy and the kinetic energy potential at every object having two types of basic energy that is the potential plus kinetic energy potential energy actually a combination of the energy that resist an object to be get in motion it resist or stop a device to be get in motion so that uh, the device is uh, trying to be in the rest and this is known as the potential energy similarly the kinetic energy with the amount of uh, minimum amount of energy that requires to be 
transfer or uh, that requires to be uh, go in the motion is defined as the kinetic energy of the system and the combination of these two energy that is the potential energy plus kinetic energy is basically known as the internal energy of a thermodynamic system. After that we will uh, know about the entropy. The entropy of a system basically defines as the thermodynamic description of the system and the thermodynamic description means the how much temperature we will provide to a system and this temperature further converted into the heat and this particular phenomenon is basically known as the entropy. Entropy also can be defined as the disorderness of the amount of particles in a material or in a substance is known as the entropy. Another important factor that we have to understand before going deep in the thermodynamics is the thermal equilibrium. The definition is goes something like this, if two systems are said to be in thermal equilibrium means if two systems we can we are saying that if the object A or object B or the system A or system B are in thermal equilibrium, it means that the temperature of both systems are same, means the amount of temperature we have provided to them and the particular uh, temperature on a specific times of these objects are same and these, these two then we can say that these two systems are in thermal equilibrium. After that we can take it as an example that we can see from the diagram. We are having two particular objects when the red one is showing the hot one and the, uh, the particular color is showing in the cold one and the heat always transfers from the high temperature energy or the high temperature range to the lower temperature range. So, the uh, heat is actually getting transferred from hot range to cold range. After that, after some time uh, the temperature gets the equal value on both the objects. For example, in the purple one they are showing the same temperature 26 degrees Celsius. So, they both system the red one and the other one has converted in the purple one and the temperature value of the both objects are same. And now we can say that they are in thermal equilibrium and now there will not be any heat exchange in between them. There will not be any heat exchange in between them so that they can be considered at and they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. Take another example of uh, a cup of coffee there. Uh, coffee is uh, found in hot temperature uh, because it has uh, made recently and the temperature of that particular coffee is higher uh, comparing to the surrounding area. So, as per the basic thermodynamic rule is the, uh, the coffee will get cold uh, because of the surrounding temperature is low and the heat will transfer from co uh, coffee towards the surrounding area. So, the temperature of the surrounding area will go up and the temperature of coffee will go down and uh, after some time uh, we always realize that the our particular coffee or tea get cold if we are not consuming it. So, this is actually based on the phenomenon of the thermal equilibrium. After knowing all these basic laws or basic conditions, we are going towards the pioneer laws of the thermodynamics and we are having four basic laws that is 0th, 1th, 2nd and 3rd law of thermodynamics. Starting with the 0th law of thermodynamics, if two systems are in thermal equilibrium, that is why we have uh, to understand the thermal equilibrium concept before because we will use these terms in the following. Uh, following laws that is the first one is the, is the zeroth law of thermodynamics. We are saying that if two systems are in thermal equilibrium with third system, then they both are also in thermal equilibrium with each other. What we are trying to say that take it as an example uh, from the figure, if, if a system or a body A is in thermal equilibrium with object or a body B. Similarly, also the A is in thermal equilibrium with the box or the body C, then the uh, objects B and C will also be in thermal equilibrium with each other. In mathematically we can say that if A equals to B and A equals to C, then also B will equals to C. So, this is what the zeroth law of thermodynamics is. If two objects are in thermal equilibrium with the third one, then they both are also in thermal equilibrium with each other. After that, we are having the first law of thermodynamics. This is the actually the second uh, 
pioneer basic law. This named as the first law of thermodynamics, the ideal one. Why I am saying ideal one? I will prove it to you that the first law of thermodynamics is basically a law of conservation of energy, a version of that we can say that which has been ad adapted by the thermodynamic process. And we all know that the, the law, basic law of, the, of conservation of energy is that the energy can neither be uh, created nor destroyed as well and it, has, it only transform from one form to another form. So, we are saying that the energy cannot be generated nor cannot be destroyed as well. It can transform its one form to another form. So, this is what the uh, law of conservation of energy is and the first law of thermodynamics is basically depend on this phenomenon and the uh, concept of this phenomenon or the statement of this first law of thermodynamics is if the heat is converted into mechanical work and this mechanical work further converted back into the heat then the overall work done of the system will be zero. It means there will not be any presence of work done there. The whole uh, mechanical work has been converted into the heat and this heat further converted back into the mechanical work. So, the overall work done we are saying that is equals to zero. It means there will not be any presence of work done there. Mathematically, we can say that uh, the uh, uh, amount of temperature or heat required for the uh, work done is the Q, we are taking it as a Q is the heat and this is the combination of internal energy plus work done that is the U plus W where U is the internal energy and W is the work done. So, we are saying that the uh, whatever heat we are providing to a system that is Q is equals to the internal energy U plus the work done W. Further, we can differentiate this equation as dQ is equals to du plus dW. It means the change in heat dQ that is equals to change in internal energy plus change in the whatever work done we are having. So, this was particular law is basically the ideal law and we will uh, this one actually proving uh, that uh, the basic condition of the energy that has been converted heat into the mechanical work and the mechanical work has been converted back into the heat and the overall work done and we are saying that there is not any loss of the heat there. So, this can be only possible in the ideal scenario practically there may be some loss of energy and this energy will further transform to some other unusable forms. After that we are having the second law of thermodynamics. So, this particular law is basically a universal experimental experience. We are saying this that the it is a practical one and we can also proving it that the various scientists uh, has uh, given us the concepts or the uh, statements that the ideal environment is suitable only on the papers, but the practical environment there is some conditions that has to be fulfilled. So, second law of thermodynamics is basically a physical law and we can say that the physical or the practical law that defines the, uh, the heat and energy conservation some basic conditions that has to be followed and the basic statement of this law is that the, there is uh, not possible to convert all heat energy into mechanical work. So, we can say that the efficiency of any engine cannot be 100 percent. It means that the heat whatever the heat we are providing to our system we cannot convert or there is not any engine uh, till there is not any engine has been produced that can convert whole heat into the mechanical work with 100 percent efficiency. So, the various scientists for example, the uh, Calvin Planck has been given some statement in the second law of thermodynamics and he and they said that it is impossible for a heat engine to produce a complete cycle if it exchange, exchange heat only with bodies at fixed temperature. So, they are trying to say that it is completely impossible to produce an engine that is transforming heat into the mechanical work and the reverse process the mechanical work into the heat. So, it is completely impossible and also some other statements there the Clausius uh, also said that it is completely impossible to construct a device or an engine that can transfer heat from cold body to hot body. We all know that practically it is completely impossible that uh, heat or a temperature will transfer from cold body to hot body. The transfer uh, uh, that uh, the temperature or the energy always flows from higher temperature range towards the lower temperature range so that they will come in the thermal equilibrium, but we cannot say that the, the 
uh, temperature will transfer from lower temperature le energy level or the uh, from the less temperature value towards the higher temperature object. So, they, there are uh, scientists they have been given various statements for the practical environment. So, this is what the second law of thermodynamics is. After that, the third law of thermodynamics, the basics of the entropy we will discuss here and uh, the statement also go towards like this, the entropy of a thermodynamic system at absolute 0 always tends towards 0. It means at absolute, tempera absolute 0 temperature or we can say that at 0 degree Kelvin, the entropy of a system always tends to 0. It means the kinetic energy of a system will or the uh, uh, kinetic energy of particular particles will always tends to 0. See in the image that we can see the in the first box there is a some temperature there. So, the uh, particle are feeling the kinetic energy they are moving they are going in that way. After that we have decreased the temperature in the second jar they are feeling less kinetic energy and, and uh, sitting in the uh, bottom of the jar and at 0 degree Celsius the kinetic uh, energy is also almost 0 so that the particle are always in the rest of the bottom of the jar. So, this is what the third law of thermodynamics is and uh, this means that at absolute zero temperature there are some condition that first one is the system does not contain any heat, there is not any uh, evidence of that the system is having some heat there and also the all particles in the system are at their lowest energy level and they will feel the uh, uh, there is not any kinetic energy also there so that the uh, entropy of a system will always tends to 0. So, this is what we have discussed in this particular lecture uh, about the basics and about the concepts of the thermodynamics. After that in the following lectures we will discuss more and more about the thermodynamics and we and after following some lectures you will be able to get about our bikes vehicle or the car uh, engines actually works of whatever it is the petrol engine or the diesel engine we will discuss more and more about it for that particular time. This is Dr. Al Srivastav signing off. Have a nice day.